the DSP boundary. So I want to section it and when we look at something. So this is how it looks like. Um, we know in geology where we have intense, where, where there's the position like this. Um, definitely there's sharing that goes on. So this is the hang on wall of the shear and this is the foot wall of the shear. That is the idea. So before we continue, I want us to quickly, if you look at if you look at the the shear, make it transparent. If you look at the shear, you realize that the top part there are no data, so which we have to trim it off. Um, and also use the topo as we use the topo to trim it off. Also use that as a guide as we go along to um, create the various loads. From the beginning, I made you understand that the parallel boundary is not used for proper estimation of our loads. It is only used for the domain zero. That is a discontinuous load or mirrorizations inside the deposit. You can also use the shears. That is it depends on what you want to do. To, I mean to estimate your uh, domain zero, but that is if you don't have loads outside the shears. If you have loads outside the shears, uh, you can use that one, but. If you don't have loads outside this shear zone, then you can use that. So you know in our mapping, when you are doing the initial exploration, you're looking for shears. So the shears controls the mirrorization. So in, in leaf rock, this is the idea of the shears. So it is our mirrorization is bounded by two main shears, the hammer wall and the foot wall. So uh, let me quickly create the topo for us to continue. The rest, I think, from the ASP boundary to the shear, the procedures are the same. It, it's just the difference comes when you create multiple loads. You have to create the, the veins and set the vein interaction, but it is is the same um, method we are using. So I want to clear the scene from here, then the position, the color, I just bring it in. So, just have to increase the line radius to, so this is Abori, um, Color. So if you look at it, you see that there are, um, there was GC drilling down here. There was GC drilling. So the top one is the the original color, and that could be the that could form a better topo. If you use everything, you're going to get a zigzag because it's going to form a triangle up and down, it wouldn't look nice. So we want to query and then take off the down ones and then leave the top ones alone. So if I'm going to do that, I just have to export the, the, the color. If you right click and go to export, you okay it. 
I just have to find a place in my desktop to put them in. I'll put it in a barry. So if I browse. So, so this is it. Um, before that, let me let me do the. So, if you click on this, I think most of them that hang below is GC. The whole tag is GC. So, I just have to double click on the color. Then I drop down to query. Then I built a query. Then the column would be you, you you're looking for the color ID. Or sorry, you're looking for the whole type. Color dot whole type. So it's but if you look at before that, let me just explain something. If you look at the whole type, you have DD, uh, DDH, RCD, and a whole lot of type RC and then you have GC. So I don't want the GC. The GC, the whole type equals with GC are those below. So I don't want them. So I just have to build a query to take them off so that you see something. So I just click on build query and call out the whole type. It's not, it's not GC. So apply. So it, so it means that all, all these are not GC. So you wouldn't see GC on them. All these are not GC. So I just have to save. So whole. I. So that is my query. So after that, you just close it. If you drop down here, the color you see it, you see your query here. If you want to see them alone, just click on this and then come to the query filter here and drop down. So this these are the holes, the, the, the color I think. I can use I can use to 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 construct the tuple. So it is fine for me to just have to go back to this. Um so let me just control fine. Um GC. So this is start from here, so I don't want them. I just have to take them off. Just have to take these ones off. Maybe. Okay. Um, So this is where GC ends. You just have to delete them. So if I delete them, I don't need this and that. I just, I don't need maximum color. Uh, I don't need this one. Just need the X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to save it as, uh, let me save it there as total. Then I, okay. Okay, so.
So here, I just I just have to import the color as points. So in leafrock, we have the points here, points file here. So I just right click and then say import points. So this is this is the topo, the points that we have created. So we have to, you just have to click. You have to drop to pick it. It's X. So Y. It's Y here. Then Z. Yeah, okay. What's up? Hello. So I finished that. And this is the point. So to create the topo, you just have to come to topography and right click add new topography from points. So we'll pick that. Uh, let it remain as topography. When you drop it, this is what you see, but it's not real. So it can't be so flat like that. So it, uh, to get it at least close, you have to work on the the uh, the surface uh, the surfacing the surface resolution. You see that is three hundred. So let me just give it two. So okay. Running. So it means it is it, going to take all this waste off. I mean, uh, is the topo will take all this waste off, leaving what is below. Uh, resolution is too small, so that's why it's taking that long. Okay, so it's done running. At least this this is this is better than it being flat. So that is why you can get. But yeah, uh, I don't want us to link the topo now because it will take long time to run if you're going to link it we just have to we just have to uh, double click on this and go to boundary and say use topo so that the topo will trim off whatever we don't need away the the topo is just at this moment just going to guide us our selection but when we are done, we just use this, I mean, the tool to just clean off the surface one. I don't want to activate it now because it takes a longer time to run when we are updating something. Okay. So now um, we go to the, the loops. For those for those who have just joined, we were trying to explain that 
This is all shit. And I'm just, so this is our shit. Bounds the, the share controls the mirrorization. That is the idea. And this is the ASP boundary. So we go the same way to create the loose. So to create the loose, at least um, you have to display the share and possible the ASP boundary uh, so that it will guide you. So to do that, let me first of all create the mesh table first. So to create the mesh table, same way we did for the sulfite and then the share. It just right click and then go to mesh table. I told you that last time that you can use the mesh table for the loose, to, I mean the sulfide to do selections for the, the share. Likewise, you cannot use the share to do selections for the, the loose. So each and every one with, um, each, each and everyone has the mesh table. So I think these two are okay. So I just have for consistency sake. Mesh table. Or better say, let me make it domain. So this is, so we're not going to use, we're not going to use the, we don't need a mesh table for the, the shares. Okay, so we, 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 we now have to use what we have created. We, 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 we created the legend the last time, the first video contains that. So we can watch the first video to how to create the match table. So I'm the sorry, how to create the, the, the legend. So I'm going to reduce the size. When you pull in the drill holes initially, they will give you a bigger radius. So you just have to reduce the size. So you know your modeling cutoff. Uh, acquisition is 0.3, success is 0.2. Yeah, so we can give this 0.3 if you want. With that, I just have to look. Let me take this off. So I just have to draw a section. Look down. And uh, just draw a section. So I'm looking south. So if I display my share, this is it. Yes, we can read this. Um, you have to decide the names you want to give it to the domains that you are creating. For me, I want to say, okay, this is the foot wall of my shape. So I just, whatever load or domain I am getting in this, on this side of the shape, I just have to put it, I just have to give it foot wall, I mean, uh, load and whatever, load I'm getting on the hang wall of the share, I just have to give it a hang wall load. And whatever you are getting on the center, I just have to give it main load. At the end of the day, your main load actually should be the biggest one, one that has um, loss of sample. Yeah, the one that has greater volume. So that's that. I just want to change this to black. So at the end of the day, this, this area, we don't need it. We can also produce a string. 
a base trick to cut this one off so the down one too you don't need it if you want it for future five future update when there's drilling to five we, we can leave we can leave that site yeah so yeah, so point three is fine but before that you have to create the selection so we do create a selection for parites creative selection for the CA. So we have to create selection for a domain because that is what we use to uh, model the domain. So we have to right click and then just go to selection. Um, base column will remain as none. And then we just have to say cell underscore. So OK. So if you OK it, what you have created, the cell has appeared. So you just have to remember, this is the part that the non loot is very, very important, which will enable you to pinch it out when you are done. So let's go back. I'm clearing, I'm clearing the scene. Just have to drag in this, then change to ASP, uh, sorry, um, RC. So I just have to activate this, sorry, before I change this. So with this, select all visible loop, visible um, intervals, so select it. Then I'll assign it to create new lithology. So non. Want this to be green. I'm selecting green because our legend. The waste is always green. So after, at, at the end of the day, if you finish domaining, whatever remains are mostly waste. So even though everything has been selected to non do as soon as you assign an, a, 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 a sample and give it a domain, it ceases to be non load That portion ceases to be non load OK, so I'm pressing D or just come here, look down. Wherever you um, I just want to start from where there's enough drilling, but at the end of the day, we still have to come back here. So whichever it is back and forth. So I just do that. When you um, create a section, the slide width give you very wider one. So you just have to bring it out here. I think uh, the drill hole spacing is good. Let me just give it 10. And give it 5 here. Going to look out. Yeah, so now bring the. Um, share. Then possibly this. Uh, let me give this uh, back to one. Three point eight. Over here, it is important to bring the assays, the original assay as well. The reason is in some areas, the modeling guide is if. You are, for example, um, let me measure this. If the distance between two samples is more than 1.5, they don't have. You don't have to lump them. So, if but an area where you have this one is two point, is almost three. If you look at this sample, it's almost three. So, 
this and this, you can't numb them because you're adding waste. The idea is to minimize waste. If you check this, I think this is almost 2.9, 2.8. So I'm bringing this so that I can say, OK, let me, let me. So this is 0.2. So I can leave this as 0.2 and the modeling one as 0.3. But I just have to reduce the radius of this and I can identify that, OK, this is. Um, this is uh, the assay. So let me give it maybe. 10.3 is fine. This one is okay. Point eight is fine. So clearly, you can differentiate the the data that this is the merge one. The bigger one is the merge one. The smaller one is the the as the original assay. So if I get to this place, I know that this one is point two. What is in between here is point two because I filter point two, so it's point two four. So I can confidently lump this because I have small grid in there, even though point two is not, um, it's not uh, the cutoff for that area. So, or you can just put it 0 0.2, 0 0.26. You just want to manage to see where you can lump the two samples together and where you shouldn't. So here, for instance, there's nothing. You don't have sample that is 0.26, so there's nothing. So uh, it is not good to lump them together. And looking at this, this one is waste. If this was high grade and this was also high grade, then maybe there's something uh, 0.25 or 0.6. There you can confidently lump them together. But there's nothing like that. And this is uh, looking at the, the legend. This is 0 to 0 0.5. So um, we can lump something like this because it will be waste. If you select from here to here, leave for a good form a hanging wall, a foot wall and a hanging wall, and take all this as 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 uh, or and to dilute your 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 resource. So we just have to be careful and then be able to do our selections and zone very well. When when over here, when you are able to do your selections right and minimize waste as much as possible, then at the end of the day, the resource of the estimation is going to be better off than putting in a whole lot of waste inside. Uh, uh, the domains. So, and then seeing all these assays inside, it is not mandatory or compulsory to select everything. There are some you can leave them because they are discontinuous. You can't add them to any of the domains. And so you have to leave them. At the end of the day, you just have to, um, those spotty or discontinuous, those have to. Who you have to construct a numeric model to cater for those small, small samples that are there. And that they, they can be uh, named as a discontinuous uh, load or whatever you want to call it. So that is, that is by way of the rules of the modeling. Okay, so. Um, So, okay. so we just have to define as, I mean, the number of loads that I can find in there uh, is based on your, your judgment. So I just have to pick this. Let me take this one. So. Okay, so I just have to pick this two. 
and then uh, based on my own judgment, I'll take this. This one is in a different section, so you will not see it highlighted until you get to that section. So I can pick this. And I assign it. So foot wall. Then I can pick this, can add this, can add this. <laughs> So this, this, so ideally, uh, because these ones are exploration data, uh, if you, if you are not going to estimate it, if you are not going to estimate it and you just want to model it so that when GC comes, then you update then you can confidently add things like this together so that when there's enough drilling in future then you can base on uh, the small section that gc will come and then do your update there and trim it down very well that is it but if you if you think that you are just doing this load to run an estimate then it wouldn't be good lumping things together especially when it is for mining for exploration model or resource model is better but if it is for mining purposes like gc and you go and add something like this it's not right or you lump this to that it's not right because of the spacing here somebody can take hold this year and then run an estimate uh it's, it's not right and let me say it again that for this one, even though this one is at the hang wall of the shear, when I get to that place, because this section, there's no any other assays, and it's only this one, I can select it for the main domain because the main domain is our major domain is priority, and it's still on that trend. The rule is when you are finding some a sample here which is only one and then there's nothing here there's nothing here and because it is uh, the main domain if you go to uh, pick that sample here and assign to the main domain is giving you an undulated um it's going to be crooked a king and that one uh, I, I don't think that data mine has dynamic anisotropy to be able to deal with that when it is like that, you cannot get a good results when you are estimating. So the, the ideal is if it is too far away from the center uh, or from the main load, you have to allow it and give it, assign it to maybe the hangar wall of that part. Because going that far away is going to, um, is going to uh, give you an undulated structure, a very strong folded in all body, which is not the best way you are going to um, um, estimate it. Yeah. So for that, I can just put, pick this and leave this and give it to you. Okay, so with this, uh, I have already done a boring resource model. Uh, bear in mind that we already have um, uh, GCD, I mean, uh, parameters ready. And so it wouldn't affect. 
So I'll just have to wait for GC when GC comes. So with that, I can select this for future purposes. I can select all this for future purposes for one a single domain. Uh, so I'll take this and then this. Give it to this. When you when you get to when you assign a particular sample to a domain and you later want to reassign it to a different domain. Yes, it ceases to be the previous domain. It goes to the, 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 the new domain that you are instructing it. So, so this, I just take this, take this for football. And so when it gets to this side, no, if the hangar wall here, when you set the very interaction, it's going to terminate it. It won't appear here. The, your main domain will have the strength. So there are times you you because you are moving faster, you may forget to, for example, this is the hangar wall site. You may forget and then you assign it to the foot wall. At the end of the day, you can change it if you want to. So you just have to be careful. I mean, uh, you do it for some time before you get used to which side is which and which side should go to which domain. So. Yeah. So does it mean that a different geologist is also doing it? He can have his own approach. Yes, everybody in the judgment. I, I can model it this way. That is what I think. At the end of the day, somebody, you can also do it differently. Okay. Yeah, and all this, what we are assigning, at the end of the day, when you finish modeling and you want to step through again, you, can, you feel like, okay, let me change it this way. Let me do it that way. So it's not, I mean, that's not the end. Just selecting it this way is not the end. At the end of the day, if I, this is vertical section. If I look down, and I'm going, I'm going, I'm stepping through, I would say, okay, this should have gone to that domain. So you have to do those kind of editing. So the edit is very easy assigning them this way, but when you are done and you want to edit it, it takes longer time because you have to, that's now you have to now look at it and then trim it down properly. Okay. Let me take this. So I want to take this for the main domain. So basically, until we are done with this, this is what we'll be doing. You step through till you finished everything. So I'm selecting all this for the main domain because it has a priority here. You can take this. And it, it, it's actually not good to select one sample for a domain. You just have to know the concept. It's not good to select a single sample for a domain. 
if if uh, it's our true sample, that is fine. But one sample isn't the best. Yeah, so you just have to understand the concept here. Let me pick this. At the end of the day, you see small wireframe here. Small wireframe here, and this will come this way, like this. Because this is going to terminate against the main, main, um, the main domain. Probably have to increase this a bit uh, so that you go fast. If there was nothing here, I would have selected all this for the main one. But because there's something here, it's better for the main one to pinch out here than uh, to leave these samples out. At times, so you have to look at the sections below. Um, for example, this one. It could happen that the section below has loss of data or the section above has loss of data, so you have no option than to select it like that.
The reason why you can lump this and this together is the, the way the orientation of the drill hole. You see how it is oriented. So if you lump it, it's, it's, no, it's not a problem. Okay, so if you look at this, this one is far. So at the end of the day, when I'm done with this, I'll go back and then check for loads that will fall outside the shear zone and then create a different geological model for them to. Sorry. Yes. I want the main one to go this way. I want it to curve this way. So I could I can use polyline when I'm doing it. So I'll select this for this. 
if you if you take it this way, at the end of the day, this has to come this way, which will be odd. So this I'm dodging here. I, I, I don't want to see um, the hanger wall in this uh, this 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 section. Whether what because it's not the the shear is very narrow. It, it wouldn't do anything if you if if you pinch off the hanger wall on that side. So when I come this portion, I have to um, remove the shear and give, give this one to maybe uh, lose outside the shear. So here you can choose what to pick and leave some because they are too scattered. You can't pick everything. So I'll take this. 
because of this being hybrid. Now take these ones. And hang no more. So if I leave this, this will come in here. So I can take this. I'm going to this is low, so I'm going to just put this one to you. So I'll take this that that's the So this clearly I'm going to take this one. Our time is up. Eh? This is basically what we'll be doing. So um, I don't know whether you would want us to uh, you want me to complete the loads. I mean, complete the selections and then we'll carry on with the loads. The ne next time or what do you think? Let's be. Uh, 